Hey guys, it's Poe back again with Let's Get Techie. The Vega 56 Nano review left me with more questions than I had prior to doing the video, so I decided to take a deeper dive into the card. Today we're going to put the card in a mid-tower ATX rig with much better airflow to see if we can get some better performance out of it. This rig has a Ryzen 1700X with 16GB of RAM, and the most important part is that it is a mid-tower ATX case. It has three 120mm fans and two 140mm fans. Think of the previous video as worst case scenario, and this as the best case scenario. I was apprehensive about doing testing this way because this card is obviously meant for a small form factor build. Yes, you can put it in a mid-tower case like I am, but the question is why? Why would you buy a card as small as the Nano only to put it in a mid-tower case? Nevertheless, let's see what kind of performance we get once the card isn't choked by a small form factor build. Before we begin, I did notice a major flaw with the card when I installed it in this mid-tower build that I wanted to share with you. Previously, I had used HDMI to connect the card, but since I'm testing upstairs in this video, both monitors are DisplayPort, and for whatever reason, the DisplayPort connections on this card are defective in the sense that I cannot plug a DisplayPort cable into the card. I was finally able to cram one in after about six minutes of messing with it, but this is a major flaw that I wanted to make sure I shared with you all. To begin, we're going to test stock performance. Keep in mind that when we tested stock performance in the downstairs mini ITX rig, we scored just a hair over 3,000 points in superposition, running it in 1080p extreme. In this system at stock settings, we get a score of 3,642. That's almost a 20% increase in performance just by letting the card breathe better. As you can see, our clock speeds varied from about 1500 MHz when starting the test all the way down to 1100 MHz by the end of the test. This was due to our temperature reaching a max of 71 C. These speeds are better than in our ITX rig, but still not what I would want having spent $450 on the card. I think my biggest question at this point is why did AMD cap the factory fan curve at 50%? We saw a maximum fan speed of 2000 RPM, which I think definitely needs to be increased. So for our next run, that's exactly what we are going to do, max out the fan speed. In this test, we left core and HBM speeds stock, and our only change was to max out the fan speed, which had us hitting just shy of 4000 RPM. This sounds like it would be incredibly loud, but to be perfectly honest, I found that the noise was less than half of what I would expect from a reference AMD or NVIDIA cooler. I've had case fans that are much louder than this cooler at full tilt. By just increasing our fan speed and touching nothing else, we saw another 7% performance increase as our superposition score rose to 3,914 points. This score puts us smack dab in the middle of a whole bunch of GTX 1070s in the superposition leaderboard for 1080p extreme. By increasing our fan speed, we saw max temps drop by 10C and hover around the 60C mark. Lastly, I wanted to see if we could do any overclocking. Previously, overclocking had netted us a negative result in performance, but I was optimistic since we had such a turnaround in performance by just switching the test rig for the mid tower. Unfortunately, I had much the same result as overclocking in the ITX rig. Performance went down whenever I overvolted or undervolted. I noticed that when I overvolted the card, it would shoot the temps up and cause the card to throttle speed. And when I undervolted the card, temps would improve, but it seemed as though the lack of voltage was now the culprit causing the clock speed to throttle. I wasn't quite ready to give up yet though. I remembered that Vega can benefit greatly from overclocking the HBM2, so I decided to keep the core clock and voltage at stock and instead overclock just the memory. At its peak, I was able to add an extra 105 megahertz to the memory speed for a total of 905 megahertz. This yielded a superposition score of 4000 even. So in the end, going from our ITX rig to our mid tower with overclocked HBM2, we saw a performance increase of just over 30%. I consider this outstanding. I feel like AMD should have shipped the card with a much more aggressive fan curve from the factory. If you are considering this card, I still cannot say that I would recommend it over a small form factor GTX 1070, but if you have a FreeSync monitor, this card is a great alternative to the 1070. Just make sure you can properly cool it. This card would benefit from a small form factor case that gives the GPU direct airflow.
that's going to do it for this one. I appreciate you guys watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you in the next one.